Hello everyone, in this video we're going to talk about servo system design using pole placement. In my previous video, I showed you how to do pole placement and how to use MATLAB and the Ackerman formula. So here, we want to design a servo system and by that I mean a system that has an input and that input is non-zero because in the previous case if you remember our states all of the x's they all converge to zero because this was the equation correct this was the governing equation and that means x of t will converge to zero as t goes to infinity so uh, here we don't want x to converge to zero especially those x's that are defined in the function of in the definition of y they are the outputs of the system those states that are also the output we don't want all of them to converge to zero we want them to converge to some constant value r okay so r here is a step function and again here uh, still regularization okay we are not going to find track a variable function r of t it's just going to settle at a constant value, like, for example, a thermostat or something, right? And we want to know how we should uh, determine this input control u so that x of t, or in this case y of t, which is equal to one of the x's, in this case equal to x1, is going to converge to the value of r. So here, for simplicity, we assume that there is one output in the system, and that is equal to x1, okay, the first state. In general, you can have more than one output, and those, they can be not equal to x1, but that you can easily change the formulation here and achieve it. So here, we go for a simple case. So we uh, choose matrix C such that Y equals X1. So C in this case is basically a one and a bunch of what? A bunch of zeros. Okay, this is your C matrix in this case. But in general, uh, it can be different. Now, what do we choose our uh, feedback? Remember in the last case, feedback was negative K times X. And we call it full state feedback. So here, still have the same assumption. Here we still assume that we can access and measure all of the system states, all of the system variables, all of the x's, right? Okay, but the output is only x1, so u is going to be what? u is going to be negative k times x, where k is the vector of uh, the, the gains, the feedback gains, right? Here, that uh, k1, which is going to be multiplied by x1, I leave it off. Instead, I use the term k1 times r minus x. And r minus x is the error. This is what? This is the error. In the previous case, there was no error term because there was no reference input. Here we do. And actually, if this negative k1 times x1... If I bring it here, then I can make this 0 to be just k1, right? And just make that 0 to be k1 with a negative. And then what? And the only term remaining is going to be k1 times r, which is what you can see here. So my u is going to be negative kx, just like the previous scenario, just like what we had earlier exactly like that, where k is going to be all of the elements, including k1, and the same k1 element is also going to be multiplied by the reference input and added to my signal, uh, my input signal. Now, if I do that, what's going to happen? So here, for u, I'm going to replace this formula right in, and it's going to be x dot is going to be ax plus b times u, that b and negative k will combine like previous case so x dot is still going to be a minus b k times x just like we had here right but now there is an extra term which is what which is b times k1 r so here you have one extra term there and of course 
uh, if you look at this equation and uh, for uh, r and x uh, you look at this equation and instead of t because this equation here x x dot and r there are functions of time t if I also replace t with the final value of it with the value at infinity when t goes to infinity then you get this equation and if you subtract this equation from the original one so you get like x dot of t minus x dot infinity x of t minus x infinity u t minus u infinity r t minus r infinity and define the difference between what define the difference between um, the uh, x and x infinity as your error so you see here i have two errors one is the error here between x and x infinity okay and you have one between r and x1 and actually they are the same thing <laughs> uh, i can show you that now actually this one is the way this one is defined it's going to be like a negative e okay because uh or if this is e then this should be like a negative e if you don't want to call them both the same thing for this one you might call it x error okay so call it x e and the other thing i need to know is the input at infinity or at time t or at any time is simply a constant r value. Remember, I told you r is what? A step function. So r of t is simply what? Your r, uh, let me see if I can write. It's very hard to write beautiful with the stylus on screen. So r of t is going to be equal to r, basically, at any point, including infinity. If you do that and subtract, this is going to be your error equation or x error equation, which clearly you see that this error of t will converge to zero as t goes to infinity. And this error means basically what? Means your x1 of t will converge to what? Will converge to the r value. So that's all you need to do, okay? That's all you need to do. This part here is your state feedback, this part, and then um, this second part here is, this is that error multiplied by K1, okay? So that whole thing is the second signal, basically, right there. And I have added them. Okay, so now I'll show you if I use this uh, strategy here in the red uh, box, choose you to be that, I can easily get my system to uh, my output, which in this case I assume it's x1, can easily get it to converge to a fixed input value of r, right? So, for example, here I go with this system where A is this matrix, B is that, C is this. Clearly, as I said, this means Y is X1. And I want the system to converge to some reference R. And I want my desired pole locations to be in these three locations. This A does not have the poles at these three locations. It has different poles. So I want to control the speed of the convergence of error to zero. And again, I want R of T to be not equal to zero. Could be any constant number. Here, in this case, we assume that R of T is simply one. Or US of T, unit step function. So the value of it will converge to one. Okay, It is going to converge to one step function, unit step function. And I'm going to show you how to use that uh, control algorithm and make it happen. So here, as I said, we need that A, that B, and so on. So let me go ahead and insert them into MATLAB for you. Okay, so here is what I have. This is matrix A that, and you can see eigenvalues of A. If I run this, the eigenvalues of A are 0, negative 1, negative 2. So although two of the poles are negative, that means uh, decaying exponential, but one of them that is zero means sustained oscillation. So the original system will have sustained oscillation in it, okay? And 
it will not converge to a fixed number. Now, uh, here, these are my desired poles for the response of the system. This is my input R, which I really don't need it because in this case, I'm just going to use the step function. So in, this is really a redundant piece of information. I just put it there for reference. I use my pole placement command and I pass to it A, B, and desired poles. And new matrix, you know, it's I, A minus B, K. If you look at the eigenvalues of the new matrix, so this is my K. 160, 54, and 11. And if you look at the eigenvalues of the new matrix, you see that these are exactly what I wanted, right? So negative 2 plus 2 square root 2 and negative 2 square root 2, uh, neg negative 2 square root 3j and negative 10, right? These are exactly the same as p. So clearly, the poles of the new system matrix, a minus bk, is what I want. So I call this A minus BK the new N. Now, I also have a new B. Last time when we did pole placement, because we used all of U, which was negative KX, and defined the new A, right? There was no B. If you remember last time, there was no B and there was no input. So this whole thing here, we just call it what? We call it A new. Now, this time... Thanks to the extra term that I have, here I have an extra term that ensures that this is my new A and this portion, B times K1, this is my new B. Because R is my input. Now, R is the same as U for me. R is my input, my command input. So, BN is B times K... One and if I use that, look, call it BN, then I call the step uh, response first. I form a, a system using A and B and C and D using the SS command and then pass it to the step function to give me the output. And look, when you do that, there we go. This is the response of the system y equal x1, and you clearly see that it is converging to what to one. Now here is just shown for three and a half seconds. If you want, you can pass to it and say, hey, show it for 10 seconds. So you can see uh, with a T final of 10 seconds, you see it clearly it is after about um, two or three seconds, it is settling exactly at what you want, right? So this system is now exactly following my orders. And if I want the system to get to the uh, final value faster and settle down faster, then I need to what? I need to change these numbers here, these guys. Because that negative 10 would uh, decay fast and go away fast. So the response of the system is really determined by these two. And remember, settling time is 4 or 3 over what? Over sigma, and sigma is the real part of your eigenvalues. Okay, so if I make this guy a little bit bigger, if I make this like four or something, right? Then I expect my settling time to be a little bit smaller. So if you look here right now, I can get the step uh, response of the system. Remember, we had the command step info, right? And to this step info, if I just pass the system to it, let's see. Uh, if you look, the settling time is about 2.1, 2.09 seconds right that's your settling time for the system with the previous values negative two negative two now i make it negative four and i run it again and get my uh, step info one more time so let's do it okay so now if you look at your settling time look here 1.11 it's almost halved Cut in half, right? Because I made my sigmas almost two times bigger. Okay, and you see you are getting to the 98% uh, within 98% of the final value and never leaving it in a little bit more than one second. Okay, so this is a fast response. If you want it even faster, you can change these guys and go up. And uh, these should not be more than that because then still these guys are going to control the behavior of the system. 
But now, look, very fast. Now you don't even have oscillations. Okay? You increase your damping ratio so much that there is no oscillation and your settling time is just 0.73 seconds. Okay? So this is even a better response. If you don't want your uh, output to oscillate, you can go up by changing the location of desired poles. Good? So this is what this is the um, servo design. Now, there is one important thing. This thing that we did, this uh, control method u equal negative kx plus k1 times r, it was applicable when the system has an integrator. When the transfer function of the system has an extra s in it or a pole at zero is type one, then this method is going to work. Now, in this case, that's exactly what we have. With the original A, if you look at it, if I create a transfer function, say what is the transfer function of A and B and C and D, you'll see that the transfer function, let's do it. Uh, oh, yeah, we need to um, convert it to state space and then to transfer function, huh? Or we can get num and denom if you want. Num and denom, and then that was uh, state of space to transfer function. Okay, so let's look at this. Okay, where are they? Here, look. This is the numerator, one, and look at the denominator, there is a zero. So your transfer function is like what? This is power s, this is s squared, this is s cubed. So it's s cubed plus 3s squared plus 2s. There is no uh, constant here, right? If you want, you can say now the system equals transfer function of num and denom. And as I said, that system is, as you can see, it has a, a pole at zero. It's a type 1. It has an integrator, okay? For this system, it works fine. If the system does not have an integrator, it gets a little bit more complicated, okay? So here, let's say I have a system that does not have an integrator. How do I go about that? Well, what do we do? Here, the difference between reference signal R and Y, which is really the error signal, this error here, this error, we define it as the time derivative of this uh, parameter xi. So xi is really the integral of the error. So xi dot is going to be r minus y or r minus cx in general, right? And that's the error, the integral of the error. So again, this xi here itself is what? Like the integral of the error. And what do I do? The control signal this time is going to be negative kx plus ki times what? Plus ki times the integral of the error. So remember last time we, uh, we multiplied a constant k from k1, right? And uh, multiplied by r. So if you look at this control that we did last time, Remember, this, this portion of it is like a proportional. It's not proportional exactly because there, this should be error to be proportional. Okay, so this is like a proportional plus some reference signal. Again, it's not exactly proportional. If you look at this new guy, it's again kind of a proportional. It's not, again, because this is not error. Plus the integral of error multiplied. So this is like a PI control, like proportional integral. Again, it's not exactly proportional integral because this guy is not really what? This is not the error. Okay, this is not the error. If it was xi dot, then it would be PI, but not this case. So it's similar to it, but not exactly. And so... <laughs> Why did they choose it this way? Is to ensure that your error ultimately converges to what? To zero. That's the ultimate goal of any control system. Stability and convergence of the error to zero. And of course, uh, the faster you can converge it, the better. So in this case, this is my dynamics of the system, right? You can see 
This is my x dot equal uh, a times x plus b times u, this one. x times c get, gets you y. Now x is multiplied by a k with a negative. And then ki times integral of the error, as you can see, xi is added to the control system, to the control input to get you u. So this is the diagram of the system. Now, uh, let me show you a little bit. And I go over it fast because I don't want to explain uh, and take a, I don't want to take a lot of your time in this video. How can I make sure that the error converges to zero? Well, here I create a combined vector which has x dot and xi dot. So I create a, an augmented vector which has x and xi. And this vector, I look at the behavior of this vector. So x, remember, x dot still equals to what? a times x plus b times u. That's my original equation. What is xi dot? Well, xi dot is r minus c x, correct? Xi dot is r minus um, uh, r minus y or i minus cx. So look here, you have negative cx, no u, and 1 times r, right? So clearly, this describes what for you? This top equation and the bottom equation. These two top equations, the dynamic equations, you wrote them into matrix format as I just showed you. So far, so good. Now, these are all in terms of time. I can also replace t with infinity to look at their steady state or final values. So wherever I have t, I replace it with an infinity, and then I subtract these two from each other, just like last time, to get the error terms. So I subtract x dot of t minus x dot infinity and xi dot t minus xi dot infinity. And I know one thing. I know that this input r is a constant input. So the value of it at any time is the same as it values its value as infinity and it's the same as r. So when I subtract this term and this term, they would be canceled. And I'm only down to the uh, augmented term times something and the u, which you can see over here. Now here I define my x error to be x minus x infinity, xi error to be xi minus xi infinity, and u error to be u minus u infinity. If I do that, I can rewrite this top equation into this bottom format. This is the error dynamics equations, right? These are the errors dynamics, dynamics of the errors. And ue here is defined as negative k times xe plus ki times xi e. Okay? So, uh, where did that one come from? Well, because you chose your u to be what? You chose now your u. Let's, let's go back. You chose your u. To be this. This is u, negative kx plus ki, another gain, a different gain, different from the values in k, times xi. So the error in it is going to be what? x error and xi error, right? And that is what you can see over here. So this is my error dynamics equations, right? Now, I can call this vector of error dynamics, I can just call it vector e. This is the augmented vector that I told you, but the error of that, not the uh, vector itself. This is the error in that augmented vector, this vector e. If I write it that way, then I can further write this into even a smaller notation, where e dot becomes a times e plus b times u e, where a, or a hat in this case, is that big thing, and b hat is this one, okay, as you can see here. So this is my uh, error dynamics, and again, u e is k times e. 
So this is my uh, dynamics equations. Now, if for UE, I play negative KE, right? Okay. As you can clearly see that here, right? UE is negative KE, and this K is not the original K. This is K hat. This K hat combined K and KI into this augmented version. So my new system, if I want to describe the whole thing, is going to be this. And this is using new matrices, A hat, B hat, and K hat, as you can see. And this system, as you know, if I plug this UE into here, it is going to give me this one. And you know, in this one, clearly error will go to what? Go to zero if I choose my K hat properly, then the system can have errors to zero. Now, can I always do that? Yes, as long as what? As long as the system, the matrix is controllable. As long as the system is controllable, in this case, it means this matrix, this one, which is a combination of A and B hat, A hat and B hat. As long as this matrix is what is full rank. So if this matrix is full rank, I can arbitrarily choose the poles of the augmented system by an appropriate selection of k hat. So I can simply say k hat equals place of a hat and b hat and p and choose my k hat. And out of the k hat, the first n variables are k's, and the next one is going to be ki, which you need to multiply by what? By the um, xi term here. So it gives you both of these gains. So you can have your input control. Control input, I'm sorry. Okay. So now this is going to be your control system dynamics, if you look at that. With K, if you select K like that, this is going to be your final control system. This is going to be AN, and this is going to be BN. Okay, so here as an example, I have this um, system over here, and um, this comes from the inven inverted pendulum on the cart. Okay, so you have this cart, and the only input comes from this force that you apply to the cart, and there is this inver inverted uh, pendulum, right? And so you have four states. One of them, uh, or two of them, comes from the uh, pendulum, right? And two of them coming from the cart. So you have x and x dot of the cart, and you have theta and theta dot of the pendulum. So you have um, two governing equations, as I said, one for pendulum, one for the card. So you have four states. And so your matrix is going to be four by four like this. And the output here is chosen to be theta, not the first one. And that's the big this difference that I told you in this case. As you can see here, it's more general than previous case. The output does not need to be especially input 1. You see, it can be any input. This C could be any C. And you see here, this C is not 1, 0, 0, 0. It's the third element that is 1. And um, D is, um, in this case, is 0 for this system the original one, okay, and now you know that the original system is unstable because this is inverted pendulum. So if you look at the eigenvalues of the original system, let me show you, you see that the system is unstable. So here, um, let me bring the code, and if I just run this initial part of it, right, so that's A, this is B, C, D, I just look at the initial part, you can see that one of the eigenvalues is positive and there are two zeros. So there is sustained oscillation and there is growing uh, exponential response. So the system is unstable. And here, by the pole placement, 
not only we want to make the system stable, we want to make sure the output, which is in this case theta, is following a step function. Okay, so this R is again a unit step function. And we want this theta to settle at a specific angle. We want to control this force such that theta settles at a specific angle and stays like that. Although this guy is moving. Okay, so this is the goal. And again, a, a stable system. Now here, uh, as I told you, we need to go about the dynamics of the augmented system. And the augmented system, x has four elements, so x is four by one, and xi here is one by one, right? Because you only have one output. So the total dynamics is going to be a five by one. Therefore, you need to select five desired poles, not four. And here, these are desired poles. And uh, actually, instead of all of these being negative 5, I decided to change them. So I made this negative 4 and I made this negative 3. And we're going to go with those poles. Clearly, all of them are stable. All have negative real parts. These two oscillatory, those are decaying. And with these desired poles, I want to control the system. Right? So uh, the first thing I need to do is to make sure whether I can do control on this system or not. So I need to form this matrix and see whether it has full rank or not. Okay, so if I go back to my MATLAB code, uh, here is the original system, which I don't really need it. These are my desired poles, as you can see. Okay, and um, here is the controllability matrix. And uh, the controllability matrix, I define it to be the same as A hat and then change the uh, last column of it. And if you can see this, uh, as I said, this matrix is the same as A hat, except this portion of it becomes B. So before forming this matrix, I already formed my A hat and B hat, as you can see. Right? So here, by a small change, I created the controllability matrix, and then I use the rank command to see whether it's rank 5 or not. So here, I go about running all of this, and you see that the rank is what? 5, which is the order of the augmented system. So the system is controllable, and I can select my poles arbitrarily. Now, uh, once we have that, so what should we choose for the K? And remember K is what is uh, the K hat actually, is the K and negative KI. So I use my place command with A hat, augmented A, augmented B, and the desired poles, and that should give me what K hat, which you can see I'm doing here. And then the first four elements of that are going to be K. And then the negative of the fifth element should be KI. Be very careful about this part. As you can see, there is a negative sign here. So the negative of the fifth element of K hat is KI, not positive of that. If you do make that mistake, you are going to make the control system unstable instead of stable. So be careful about this negative sign over here. So here I get my k hat, and then I display for you k and ki, and then I show you the eigenvalues of the system with a hat, b hat, and k hat, which is controlling my dynamics, as I said, this matrix, and showing that all the eigenvalues of that are exactly these five things, and they make my system what? Uh, stable. So look here. Here, by the way, the order of 3, 4, 5 is uh, opposite, but really doesn't matter so if I want I can make this five this four and this three okay uh, so here look I'm going to run this portion of the code see that this is my K matrix this is my KI the rank was five the original system is unstable now the modified system, the control system, is stable. And you see I exactly got my poles where I wanted them to be. This is the same as what? This is the same as P. Okay? 
So now, how do I uh, create the modify the control system and look at the res step response of that? So if we go back, remember this is my control system where this matrix here is AN, this matrix here is BN. So here you see I have defined AN and BN, A of the control system and B of the control system. Now you might say, what is C and D of the control system? So let's take a look at that part. So in the control system, uh, with the augmented variables I added, right? This portion of it, if you look, this is the same as C. And the output has nothing to do with xi, which is the integral of the error. So I do not want to see the integral of the error. I'm still interested in theta. So if you look at the new C matrix, it's the original C plus an extra zero. Okay? And, of course, dn is going to be what? Is going to be zero because r, the reference signal, is not multiplied by anything in the new system to add it to y, right? Remember y, the output, theta, is just theta. I don't need to add any multiple of the input command, right, to that to make it theta. So that d is clearly what? Zero, just like dn. dn is like d, they are zero. So with this system, with this CN and that DN, I go ahead and, and if you want, instead of that, I can just make it like CN0. And I can go ahead and create a state space model with these matrices. And for 10 seconds, I create the step response and then I can get the step info. So here I would run this whole section for you. There we go. Look at the step response. You clearly see that it is converging to what? It is converging to one. And this is theta. Yes, so you see that not only I could make the system stable, I could exactly control how it is behaving, and this is the step response. The settling time is 3.64 seconds. If I want it to be faster, then I need to change that negative 1 and negative 1. So instead of waiting for 3.6 seconds to settle at that number, I can bring that number down, right? So I can probably make this negative 1 and that negative 1 something like Let's say if I just make it negative 2 and 2, you probably will see that the system is going to be at least twice as fast, right? Or something like that. And you see now, first of all, the oscillation is much less. And if you can see the settling time now is 2.35. Okay. And if I want, again, I can go ahead and change all of those poles, right? I can uh, change all of the uh, poles of the system. And I can make these negative parts in magnitude bigger, and I can make the system faster and faster. So this is how we design it for a system without integrator, when the original system transfer function doesn't have an integrator. And this is how we do it for the integrator, the system that has an, at least an integrator. So it's type 1 system or, or more. Okay, so hopefully this uh, servo system design or... Uh, you might call regularization design using pole placement is useful to you and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.